What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. Today's review was postponed multiple times, just like the corresponding movie, but at least I could beat that one. So here we go, the 10274 Ghostbusters Act 1 set. The box has the standard new look for the 18 plus sets, it looks okay-ish with the Cadillac on the black background, although I could imagine a much more colorful and action-packed scene on the front. On the back you can see the impressive dimensions, the car itself from another perspective, two features in action, spoiler alert, it has many more, and also two screenshots from the Ghostbusters Afterlife movie. Let's open the box now. The set has 2,352 pieces, the price is roughly 200 euros or dollars on lego.com. As you see there are tons of bags inside, actually my table is not big enough currently to fit all of them. There are 23 numbered bags and an unnumbered one, and you also get a cardboard envelope. The usage of cardboard instead of plastic is a small but great step towards sustainability, we'll find the manual and the sticker sheet inside. I already see some moaning comments about the stickers and why not all parts are printed. Well here I was really glad that all this rust is in sticker form because I can choose not to apply them, I prefer a clean look. Unfortunately my manual was dog-eared in the envelope, which means LEGO has still some processes to improve with this new packaging style. The front cover of the manual is quite unusual with the schematic look and the cutouts. It actually seems to be a nod to the design of the famous Haynes owner's workshop manuals. There was actually one released for the Act 1 in 2017, although that did not include yet the latest iteration of the car. Maybe we will see a new one coming when the movie is released. In the manual there are some screenshots from the movie with a fun call to action on the first page to rebuild the Act 1, then some details about the 1959 Cadillac Miller Meteor itself and its appearance in the previous movies. Then there's a short session with Mike Siaki, the mastermind behind almost all the latest LEGO Creator Expert vehicles. After some cool schematic renders we are almost ready to build. If we jump to the end of the manual we get the usual part list and interestingly a small GM logo on the back which means this set is actually licensed from GM as well. So let's start building. This is the frame of the vehicle with something that seems to be the rear axle. Most of the construction so far is made of old style study technic beams and frames, it is quite sturdy. The two sides of the rear axle are not connected and there's some kind of a moving platform at the end of the car. Here is the front axle and some part of the steering system with this huge 40 tooth gear. There's no steering rack, it will be interesting to see how the steering will work. Despite the promising Technic pieces used, the set does not have a working suspension, the steering arms are fixed to the chassis. This is already the end of bag 1, the front axle is completed, the upper steering arms are also connected to the chassis with these long axles. Seals are added on both sides and some construction started on the floor. It is interesting to see the yellow tiles, I wonder if they will be visible or not going forward. Apparently not, there's a mechanism built on top of it that can be pushed sideways with the shock absorber from the Ducati built-in. This is the end of bag 2 and we already have a cool gunner seat built with lots of details, there's an integrated proton pack with a new printed tile. And the coolest detail here is how the mechanism works, I try to show it in details. There are a lot of different movements happening at the same time, so let's see it again. I removed the seat for a better visibility and added a temporary piece there, the mechanism is more visible this way. I really love it, too bad it will be hidden in the model. Let's jump now to back 3. The rear axles are covered now, this shaft is apparently driven by one of the gears attached to the axles. It's quite interesting as both sides had a gear, I'm not sure how the other gear could be used going forward but it will be interesting to check at the end. The rear section starts to get details with some very colorful pieces. Here is the rear bumper which looks great, but the part usage for the rear lights is pure genius. The housing is a small turntable, there's a cup at the rear and the assembly of the lights fits perfectly in the square hole of the turntable. The whole thing looks so natural, like all pieces were designed to fit this way. We started to build the side of the car which is fixed, it includes the hidden button that can be used to deploy the gunner seat. The steering wheel is also added which is by the way a brand new 5 module white piece, you can see how it connects the big 42's gear to make the steering wheel turn much more than the limited steering angle of the wheels would allow. The next assembly with the seat has again so many weird piece connections and angles and it comes together just perfectly. Additionally it slides in place with a connection at the end that is normally not designed to connect, yet it still slides back and forth smoothly with a click at the end. The box says RTV there which should stand for Remote Trap Vehicle, you will see this cool mechanism later on in action. Some gadgets are added to the rear section, 
Not sure about their purpose, but they certainly look cool. We are at the end of back 4. Just take a look at this side view at the rear. So many things going on inside, it is insane. Here is our first opening door. It will have some additional details later on from the inside. The next door has a cool custom piece with a printed No Ghost logo from the movie and the doors are opening against each other. After this side we have the door added to the other side as well and this is the end of back 5. More ghost hunting gadgets added to the rear, including tiles with the tape and the clock prints that I've seen last time in the city sets of my childhood. There's also another seat added, this time it is fixed. The car is really starting to take shape. We have the red trim of the doors and also the iconic Cadillac tail fins with the rocket lights. This is the end of back 3. Here is the front section and again some very innovative part usage. You can see barrels and the grill that has not less than 44 silver roller skate pieces. Then comes the Cadillac engine with tons of brick build details like the air filter, the radiator, the battery and so on. This section is the front wheel arch using some cool snot building techniques and as a nice extra it has this big grey element used as a wheel well so you won't be able to peek in the engine bay from the wheels. Even more details added to the engine with all the belts, cables and so on. Time to build the dashboard. There's a mixture of printed and stickered pieces with a lot of gauges and other instruments. Before the end of bag 8 here comes the hood which can be opened of course. A small complaint here could be the unfinished look from the bottom with the various colors and the blue piece visible on the side that could have been also black or white. The next bag gives us the windows and this is when those yellow rail pieces start to make sense in the doors because the assembly of the inner door cover and the window is attached to that with some clips. This assembly has the upper part of the front seat bench and it also houses the gear and axle for the hand of God steering. It is quite a challenge to attach but at the end we can see how the steering will work. Time to complete the front doors as well with a similar technique that was used for the rear ones. The brand new windshield piece will be installed and unfortunately this is a case again where LEGO is unable to protect such big transparent piece from ugly scratches. It looks really horrible and believe me these are not fingerprints or anything that can be removed. It is a real shame because with such a huge piece it is very noticeable. After the curved rear windows, which are built sideways by the way, now it's time to add the rear door that has a very interesting hinge mechanism where those toe balls are attached to the sockets. The whole assembly is angled and for the first sight you would think there's no way it will move in the correct direction, but it does and it really works as it should. Back then starts with the front of the roof section, then comes the main part which has again a working mechanism integrated with an interesting combination of system and technic pieces working seamlessly together. After finishing the roof with some extra pieces, we arrive to the end of back 10. This is the roof rack with tons of gadgets and details built, we will look at them a bit later. The siren assemblies have some cool slopes with a grill printed on them, unfortunately the print is not really symmetrical. There are also some spotlights and other accessories added. The wheels have printed covers that will hide most of the white rim, I guess the aim was to simulate the old school white wall tires without the need of an actual customized tire. We only have a few sections left to cover like the area around the rear wheels. Then there are some blue hoses added along with the ladder that is made of two window frames. The ladder used to be on the other side of the vehicle in the previous movies, but I guess this time the new gunner seat function had a priority. These are already the final touches. The rear siren assembly, some cables and the build of one of the brand new extra features, the deployable RTV, which was hinted by the sticker inside. So here is our build in its full glory, just take a look at the size and all the fantastic details. As I mentioned I did not apply the rusted stickers because I think the vehicle looks better without them and they have a sort of cartoonish design not really matching the details and the realism of the build. We get some hints about the functions at the end of the manual but that list is far from being complete. First of all we have the hand of God steering with the functional steering wheel operated by the transparent light on the front of the roof. Then there are the opening doors. The front ones have limiters to have a realistic operating range. The rear one only works on one side, but that one opens all the way back to make the gunner seat easily deployable. There's a hidden button to operate the gunner seat that works great. Just remember the complex mechanism that makes it work. You don't really need to open the door before deploying it. It has enough power to push that one out. Pushing it back in place requires some attention. And apparently there's a reason why we have this tile with the arrow here. 
If you push that section, then it goes back in place without any issues. If you try to push the chair or any other parts, then you will face some trouble, so pay attention to this. Going back to the RTV deployment, it also works well and the remote control trap is deployed with an impressive speed. There are still a few things to pay attention to. First of all, you need to make sure to insert the RTV properly. If you put it in sideways, then it won't work, and it's actually not that difficult to make it stuck if it is not centered. Another small challenge is the operation itself, as the handle to pull is really small. For me, it worked the best when I use my fingernails. Now let's check all the things happening on the roof. I talk about the hand of gas steering, but besides that, we have more stuff moving when we push the car along. This alternating thing is called the TU antenna, which is also known as the sniffer, monitoring psychokinetic energy. There's also a rotating half-dome directional antenna, a modified marine red dome antenna, and a whole bunch of other instruments that are quite difficult to identify without being a trained Ghostbuster. But the level of detail with all the tiny stickers and everything is very impressive. Let's not forget about the hood that also opens, revealing the detailed engine bay that I showed you earlier. If you remember, there are a lot of details and instruments inside as well, but it's a shame that once the car is built, they are not really visible anymore. We can take a sneak peek by opening all doors, but the gadgets and everything else are not easy to spot. One possibility would be to have a removable roof, but with all the integrated working functions on top, that was not an option here. There's also one little extra that has no dedicated place, this brick-built Stay Puft Marshmallow Bag. So, going back to the size of the model, it's big. It's actually much bigger than any of the previous Creator Expert vehicles I have. The length is very similar to the Technic Ferrari 488, but that one is of course much wider. So, let's sum it up. I think Mike did it again. It is another fantastic design with tons of details, cool building techniques, and actually more working functions than some Technic sets. <clears throat> there are no really boring or repetitive areas during building, and you learn something new on every second page. What can I mention on the negative side? Not much really. The overall stability of the build is good, although there are some parts that can fall off easily if you try to lift it up, such as the front bumper section. It's a shame that after the build we can't really see the interior details, but I'm not sure if it would have been possible to add the removable roof while keeping all the working functions. The rest of the complaints are not related to the specific model, such as the scratched windshield or the dog-eared manual. There's one thing I did not mention. Despite being an iconic movie vehicle, there are no minifigures added. The car is obviously not minifigure scale, but all previous Acto 1 sets had minifigs, and LEGO has the habit to add minifigs to movie cars at this scale, like the Batmobile or the Tumblr. I'm not sure if the reason was to keep some surprises for the movie, as we did not see much in the trailers yet, but it would have been cool. So, all in all, if you are a fan of the Ghostbusters movies, then this set is an obligatory build for you, and I can also highly recommend it if you simply like complex builds with working functions and interesting design. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe and tap the notification bell if you don't want to miss my LEGO reviews and other LEGO RC videos. See you next time, bye bye!